jumping from one relationship to the other, testing water. Some people say, I want to test, you know, test all spirit so that, you know, you don't test with another human being's life. You don't joke with another human being. You are testing this one, testing. Oh, do you know how many people are on planet Earth? And you keep testing, and you are testing until you test away your destiny. The period of your singlehood is the period where you serve God wholeheartedly. You don't joke with service. You don't joke with serving God. It is the period when you are on fire for Jesus. I know there's something burning under you, I know, as men. You know, I've heard stories when I was single, and they would tell you, ah, if we, if they, so I don't know, because we have younger people here, I don't know how to deal with this, but God will help me, amen. amen. And they will say, ah, yeah, my tummy is paining me. I need to, okay. they need to pour somewhere. Eh, mama, so, please don't let anybody use you as a test run. You are too important to God. You carry God on your inside and you are allowing somebody to use you as a test run. Then when they finish testing you and you are no more testful, they throw you away. Say that will not be my own portion. I hope you are listening tonight. So some of the things you can check out in a person you are dating or you are going into courtship with. Please don't say these things don't matter. It's not a rule. I'm not saying these things as a rule. Amen. Amen. But there are simple principles that can guide you. As a believer, you don't date as the world dates and be expecting a Christian reward or a Christian outcome. You date as a believer, as a Christian. There are principles for Christian dating or marriage or courtship so that you get the result as a Christian. He says, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You cannot sow tears and be expecting corn. You can't sow unbelief and be expecting belief. You need to sow what you want to see in your relationship. Hallelujah. Sow communication, you will reap it. Sow faith, you will reap it. Sow things you want to see in your relationship and you will see it manifest. Can I answer that? Hallelujah. So some of the things that you need to check out for in the person you are dating or you are courting, hallelujah. How is the person or how does this person treat his or her parents? You know, sometimes they are the Lord and master over their life. Nobody can talk to them. Nobody can correct them. A man, we've said it so much in this house. A man who cannot hold you, who can Cannot, who disrespect his parents, who have nobody, he has nobody he submits to, will not, will disrespect you, and will not submit. So, it is for a woman too. So, a man who does not honor his parents, or honor God, and when you are talking, he says, Fi Bible, let's, take back on, no? let's deal with this issue with reasoning. You've not seen where reasoning bust somebody's brain before. Marriage is one institution that you will, with all your degree, is what, you have all the degree, you're a professor, but when you are going into it, they will say, this one, we are giving you a certificate before you enter. We assume that you know. So if you know you don't know, you better know that that guy has a mentor, has somebody he submits to. Has somebody that can call him to order. So goes for the women too, because it looks like the the men are the women are feeling like, oh, it's the man. Please, whatever I'm saying to you, take it as your own. Don't think, ah, oh, brother, so and so needs to be here. Ah, that my boyfriend needs to hear this. You hear it. Hear it. Hallelujah. So how does this person treat his? Does he honor his parents? Or he just dishonors them. He disrespects them. They talk to him and he talks back. He curses his sister's house. Especially men. If a man does not treat his, sis- his sister well, watch it. It's a red flag. It might not be a deal breaker, but it's a red flag. Watch out for it. 
how does he act when his friends are there or when you are not there so we have a friend so this lady very prim and proper she reads ah when i say your brain cannot handle my this girl can you know people who you know that this one cannot fail in marriage even you you've concluded for them today she's divorced uh. Not small divorce though. She got married to a drug baron. This is a sister. I'm not, I'm not talking about sister. I'm talking about sister. <laughs> Jesus baby. So how did she miss it? She saw the red flags. This guy will come to our house and always taking Tom Tom. So he's always you know, looking all packaged, looking all good. When they are going out, so check it. When he's not with you, how does he behave? How does he dress? Some people, the moment they know you are, they are going out, taking a date, they clean up, they, you know, everywhere. The cologne, you'll be smelling it from the bus stop. Not knowing that this guy does not bath. In a week, it's one week, one soap, as in one bathing. No hygiene. No disrespect to his body, disrespect to you know things around him. <laughs> no, but really, that's the body of Christ. <laughs> and he pretends, make sure he got her. You know, when they say somebody got her, they this lady brought, and you know, one of the things I'll still get to red flags you should look out for red flags don't say you didn't see you saw it except you are not the daughter or a son of god you saw it don't don't tell me what i do not i know you saw it you knew but you just said ah maybe i'm thinking it or i'm overthinking it it might not be what i'm thinking it was probably in the car where they were smoking or it was it can't be him. I know him, this brother. You know some people come to church just to get a lady. I told you of a, of a brother. I read it online on Twitter. The guy said, he just noticed that fine girls used to come out of that church. Ah, fine girls every Sunday. Sunday in Sunday, the guy just went to church. Did first timer. After first timer. Did workers. After workers. Joined department. So every Sunday, this brother was counseling sisters. Oh no, he was cancelling sisters. He had to say it himself that he needed to repent that it was too much. Some people come to church for ulterior motive. May you not fall into that Amen. trap in the name of Jesus. Maybe the person I'm preaching to might not be even be in this service this evening. But if you are online and you are listening, it is my prayer that you will not make that costly mistake in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever trap the enemy has set for you, that you will fall or your marital destiny will be aborted and you will not have a good testimony in life. Today, that plan and purpose of the devil concerning you is being aborted in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you need to watch it. Not all brother is a brother. And not all sister is a sister. Hallelujah. So how does he speak when he's with his friends? You need to, you know, just bump in on him when he's not expected. Bump in on her. You know some ladies. Oh, even ladies on is even worse. They will tie her up inside house. Hair unkept. The body is smelling and we don't even know which part is smelling. Either the up or down. You don't want to go there. Your hygiene is important. Because that's what you bring as a single. It's what you will manifest when you get married. So you must deal with it before you get married. Amen. Amen. You need to watch out if they are involved in their local church. That is very important. You need to watch out. Is this lady involved in his or her local church i'm not saying this is just said the lord but i'm saying these are things you should watch out for that will help you know that is this person a follower of jesus hallelujah are they involved in their local church do they show up for prayers 
or meetings that the church calls for. Or when they are fasting, when the church is fasting corporately, they will say, no, I don't fast. I don't fast all those corporate prayers. I have my own personal work with Jesus. You know, I have the way that I, you know, commune with Jesus. Don't let them lie to you. You know? Lord, you know? They will tell you they are praying. Not this soon, Lord. Why not help yourself and pray corporately? They call six hours prayer. You didn't show up. You say you, you have your own way. Okay. Oh. They call fasting. You say no, you will not fast. You have your own way. You talk to God. Must I fast? <laughs> you know, this, this is the 21st century. In fact, we are in the 22nd century. How many people fasted? And they bought a, a flying jet or they have refineries. We know refineries owner are now crying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How do they under pressure? Do they fold under pressure? Because what happens under pressure is a true nature of that person. What happens when they are under pressure? Do they curse out? You know, they hit their car and they are like, ah, mama, pa, bo, bo, eh. Oh, ni lombi by lady. Eh, me too. Oh, okay. Christianity, te me, oh, de, bo, bo, yeah. Oh, oh, remove their shirt and show you the color of wood, wood they are. How do they act under pressure? Do they honor God and honor their pastors? Scripture told us, why do you... Why do you even think a man or a woman that you're dating should honor your, your man of God? Because these are people that can hold them accountable. He says, Scripture told us that we should give our pastors, elders, double honor because they labor, us, labor over us in word and in doctrine. So if you are giving your parents honor, you give your pastors double honor. So you're wondering why you, the person you're dating is honoring. We need to check you. Is it that you're having witchcraft in you? Or you want to manipulate that lady or that guy to do what you want? This is the person that can help him or help her stay on the right path. So you want to use your witchcraft. I will still be dealing with, you know, some of the red flags. We still have time. Hallelujah. So how did they handle finances? Or the society and tithing? So if you are dating somebody and they don't believe it, say no, no. You say we should tithe. They are saying no. Why would we tithe? Have we saved? Nobody is saying don't save. But we should believe in the same thing. That is why it's important that the person that you are dating is listening to what you are listening to. So if you are not yet married, ensure that what they are listening to is correct. So that they will not import whatever when you get married. I'm not saying that you must start going to the church of the man you are dating or the woman you are dating, but I'm saying be sure. Is this person listening to the same thing? Or they are being, you know, what they are hearing is forming a good character or forming righteousness in them. If not, trust me, you are going to have issues. You will have issues. Somebody, so not all Christians are Christians. I speak in tongues. Oh, so we saw it at that sister's meeting. A lady that, that, you know, she asked a question. She's dating somebody that speaks in tongues. She doesn't believe in speaking in tongues. You will have issues. Oh, no, no, you will have issues. Because Pentecostals are Pentecostal rascals. You need to know or be sure that the person you are dating has the same value, believe the same thing. And the doctrine that you are, you, you are following is what the person is following. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. So don't marry somebody or date somebody that you see these red flags. Love is not enough in marriage. So they say love is blind. Marriage will open your eyes. Oh, love is blind. Okay, well, I accept. I'm not even disputing. When you marry between gum or whatever that you plastered on your eye, will open. 
So you better take care of what you need to take care of when you are single. Settle those issues on time. Can I add an amen, amen to that? Correct those things. Is this person a follower of Jesus? Hey, is this lady a follower of Jesus? May you not be blinded, though. Amen. I've seen believers marry witches. We know of a popular, popular man of God in this country that people who say, yeah, I didn't say it, though. I'm just preaching and I'm charging you. Amen. I'm not the one that says it. supporting what they said, that the man of God married. So it's possible you can be bringing fire and brimstone, but at home, you are sitting on coals because home is not home. <laughs> it's fire. He says it's better to stay with a woman who is, please let me look for it, than a contentious woman on the rooftop. So that means, please don't even go there. If you see that this woman, if you say one, she has given you three back. Before you land it, she's, she's feeling I'm intellectual. Please watch it though. I'm not as a woman, you should now become Mumu. No, that's why scripture called the man the head. Yes, come on. Don't put the head under your bum bum and be thinking that you are now equal. I'm not part of those uh, feminists that don't respect their husband. Though. No, I will tell you what God, God's word says. Hallelujah. God. So for you to get the Christian marriage result, you need to date the Christian way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Better to live on the roof. To live where? <laughs> Better to live where? On the roof. Live, than where? Share the house. With a nagging wife. Scripture knows me. You know, my husband is one person. When we say anything, in scripture though, when I say, ah, pastor, I, mean, I don't agree with that. Okay, wait. What does scripture? So that man must be a priest. That's why he's the head. I didn't claim. I'm not the head. He's supposed to guide. So whatever he says, he guide, and he has been guiding us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me, I don't know how to. I was telling the ladies the other. I don't know how to nag. When I've seen my mother when I was growing up being beaten like a pop. I don't know, maybe that conditioned me. That Oluwa Fumilola. Don't you let your mouth race before so that you'll not receive woes worse. We've seen pastors. I can't mention names. I know people. A past a man of God, big man of God in this city of Lagos. <laughs> Be, it's, not, it's not that. You know what we used to say on Thursday? No. This one. No. Ah, I can't even imagine it. Oh, God have mercy. May you not fall into the wrong hands in the name of Jesus. No man will use you as a punching bag. Oh. This man will finish beating the woman. They now go to the pulpit and now be preached. I don't know. At some point, the woman stopped going to church. Because... She can't even stand it. Kill her so man of God, eh, Joe? Eh, <laughs> Just... So that a man is, a, is first of all what? A man. So please, don't be a nagging wife. The spirit of God should make you of a quiet and a mixed spirit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You... You can be, you know, jovial. You can be all that, you know, the life of the party, anything. But when it comes to your relationship with your husband or your... You don't mess around such things. There's a reason God made the man the head. It means you should submit. When you submit, the man will love you. It is natural. Hallelujah. There's a natural order of things. You don't... And you know, I, I just said you women uh, that when you submission does not mean you don't have it though. 
doesn't mean you are mumu. Doesn't mean you don't have money. No, is that you are following the order of God. You even have the money. And he says, sit down there. You are not traveling. You sit down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So some don'ts for believers. Hallelujah. Some don'ts that I want to say. Like I said, these things are not like rules. But principles that can guide you as believers, young ladies and gentlemen, in your relationship. So that you avoid wasted years. You avoid wasting time. You avoid wasting resources in the wrong places. You avoid sowing in the soil that is not going to yield anything. Hallelujah. Because some people have sowed emotions. You've been petting her, petting her, petting her. And this girl has been wasn't you, wasn't you, wasn't you. Then suddenly she now friends on you. Don't marry or date someone you have seen some red flags. I'm, like I said, I'm going to mention some red flags to us that you should look out for in your relationship. Don't date or marry someone you've seen. If it's so little, my dear sister, my dear brother, deal with it. Deal with it. There's no rush. Say nobody's rushing me. There's no rush. Don't engage in premarital sex. We've said that over and over again. What premarital sex does, it is it blows your vision. You won't see clearly. So people are seeing like this. Pastor will say, you are seeing concave. <laughs> so instead of you to be seeing that this girl is a witch, you'll be seeing that, ah, ah, why is her wings so shiny? Our <laughs> sister is flying in the night. <laughs> and you know what happens to a drunk? Everything is fine. <laughs> just, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> you're so good looking. Oti Mutio. Sex is intoxicating. Scripture says it. I didn't write it in Proverbs. It is in talk. So when you start having sex before marriage, you begin to see things blurry. You will, your vision will not be clear anymore. You'll be taking decisions that are not right or consistent with your destiny. You know you are supposed to break this, but because your emotion is now tied, because whoever you sleep with, you are now one soul with that person. So imagine if you have slept with 50. They asked the lady, that how many people have you slept with? Said, on the count of 10 or what, or 50? She can't count. So just be looking straight. It's not you I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't use sex as a tool to hold a man. Trust will not be there. So he can marry you eventually. Or you now tie him down by getting pregnant. That's one, the one I, that even shocks me. You know that this guy doesn't like you. You know that this guy has other babes, side chicks, slim mamas. And you now say that, okay, when I give back, we know, we know all these um, musicians now, how they have plenty. So they feel that because they gave back, they will be the one he will now say. So. <laughs> It has us that you can have four for him. Have three for him. The one he will choose, he will choose. Amen. Amen. So thinking that sex can tie a man down. Is it not this man that I'm seeing their faces? Wise stuff. Just be looking straight. Wise men. I don't know. You are wise. You have God on your inside. You stand can't play, and you feel that you, as a woman, you will now... No, it doesn't work like that. It takes more than sex to hold a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when you see these red flags, please ensure that you deal with them. Don't isolate your friends because you started dating. That's the one that even shocked me. They now start having boyfriends. Oh, and to there's no point dating or going into courtship when you're not ready to marry. 
That's why I said that you test this one, you test this one, you test this one, you don't know which one will be it eventually. So as we have, statistics says we have over 8.2 billion people on planet Earth. So I wonder how many people you will test before you eventually get it. That's like the spirit of God on your inside. You don't make mistakes. We don't make mistakes on in, in, in this church because you are prepared. You are you are you you are whole. So w w any man coming to you, me, human being. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't isolate your friends, your family, because you started dating. The moment some people start dating, their family is no more good enough. They are not good enough. Ah, when, they are, when the babe or the brother is coming, they will now tell their family member, yeah, oh, go to the house. I don't want her to meet you here. I don't want him to meet you here. Thank you so much. God bless you. So they, their family is now, they are, is not uh, up to it anymore because they are dating into, quote and unquote, the rich family. They now isolate their family member. They don't pick their calls anymore. When you get into trouble or problem, please tell me who you call. <laughs> if that guy is too good to be true, probably is. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's just, it's too good to be true. Then it's, it's too good to be true. It's not true. Amen. I hope somebody get that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So watch it. Watch it. So I'm going to mention some red flags that as believers, as children of the Most High, as daughters of Zion, that we need to watch out for. Because these things, they are there. You saw it. You noticed it. You just lied to yourself. That I can deal with it. I can handle it. You cannot handle it. Amen. Amen. Some even go into a relationship because of the comfort they can get. Marry, they know that that guy is Baba, he's 10 times their age, but because of the comfort, then they get into the marriage, the guy can't satisfy them, they start sleeping with the driver. They go into it because of the comfort, they saw it, they know that this guy will not be performing at some point, but because of the comfort they can get, they go into it. May this decisions that we make in life not lead to regrets in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our opening text again, Proverbs 27 verse 12. A prudent man, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precaution. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffer the consequences. Unthinking person will walk right into it and regret it later. Number one red flag. Number one, when you are dating someone who is not consistently pursuing Jesus. When you were dating and you say, let's go to church, you say, why now? Every day, every day, church, 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 church. What's even say? And they complain. It is a red flag. I'm not saying you are perfect or you are there yet. Notice the underlining word, consistently. Consi consistently. That means that person is not there yet, but he's willing to make his mistakes. Stand up and continue following. He made his mistakes. He stood up and continued following. Consistently pursuing, following after Jesus. Oh, don't play with that. When I was to uh, marry my husband, so you know, because of the modeling and all that, but I know, and I thank God for my mother, and the prayer that has gone ahead of me, and all those who showed who is even though, so the, the, <laughs> even though CAC might not prepare us for the word, but we pray. Oh, we pray. I mean, it's she shall look for Jesus. I mean, it's she said, babe. <laughs> what? 
Do you have a that will stuck in your throat? <laughs> and nobody can help you. Ah, you will not make a mistake. Yeah. Even though there is no marriage in heaven, but can determine how you enjoy heaven. Ha! If you marry somebody that frustrates your destiny and you go and commit suicide, you just, mm, you have to buy yourself, you get to heaven, they now say you should go and be washing toilet. This is well with you. You know, Pastor was sharing this morning. The rich, um, poor man, uh, no, the poor wise man, the rich fool, the wise virgin, you know that those foolish virgin doesn't mean that they will not get to heaven. It's the reward that is that differs. So I pray that you will not make costly mistakes in the name of Jesus. And for those who are already in it, it is my prayer that God will retrace your step and correct wherever you have gone wrong in the name of Jesus. So don't get yourself yoked with an unbeliever. Don't get I, you know, I said something that there are Christians and there are Christians. But to now marry an unbeliever, ah, niceness is not enough. Oh. Mm-hmm. I've told you, and Pastor has shared this story before. This guy, nice looking guy, Pastor said, Come for counsel. He said, Pastor, if you want from 11, I told you. <laughs> I know when guys are out, can they assure themselves? They, they feel that they can run things. I from my LM at The girl keeps knife under her own pillow when they got married. The guy holds bottle. <laughs> oh no, I'm not telling you, Fabu. You know what we what was today they are they are divorced, but now happily married to separate people. Uh, you know, but if they are taking counsel, if they are taking counsel, you would have seen. Or during counsel, you would have noticed that this guy has anger issues. This guy is not consistent with Jesus. This lady still has underlying things she needs to deal with before getting into this relationship. You will not be an experiment in in life in Jesus' name. That somebody comes to church regularly doesn't mean they are a follower of Jesus. I told you of some, some, some guy that wrote it on Twitter. And Twitter... If you are not brave, you don't go there. Me, I'm just, I just go there and like pastor's post and come out. You know, so nobody is coming to church every every minute, day in there. We've seen it now. Like, you know, maybe your neighbor, you know how they go to church, but when they come home, you know how they beat themselves. Does not mean that they are a follower of Jesus. Make sure that this person loves the lord hallelujah hallelujah some people come to church to get connection some people come to church to run babe whatever you are coming to church for may god reveal the intent and the purpose of your heart in jesus name and our sisters will not fall prey to the devices of shemoro and sheni shower brother is the the brother as the men already, they know they will not fall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you meet somebody, maybe you just met them me at a social gathering or you met them at a conference and your young, you know, meets your young and you feel that, oh, we are connecting. And in the next few hours when they are talking, you've not, they've not spoken about the church they go to the values they believe in, where they serve in the ministry. In the first hour, you meet a man and he has not told you or you have not perceived the values he represents. Is a red flag. Any man on earth, anybody, when you meet them, the first thing that they, in the first few hours that you talk to them, Whatever they value or they love most is what they talk about. If it's car, they start talking. Oh, did you? Or, or ah, that one is. Hey, do you love football? And they discover you love football. That conversation is over. Football, they must sort it. They must be there. You love football? No, that's not. That's not it. That's not what you will, that will sustain you in the day of adversity. 
Hallelujah. So people talk about what they value most when you meet them. So you need to know that the person you are dating or the person that you are going to go into courtship with has the same value that you have. That your values are aligned. I believe in speaking in tongue. Yes, you believe it too. I serve locally in my local church. I go to church on Sunday. I'm a man of God. I'm, a, I'm an ardent. I love Jesus so. I hope you love Jesus. If they are faking it, you will know. Very soon you will know. Amen. Amen. Because you're a child of God. Hallelujah. So if you have to ask somebody about their value or what they believe in or are they, do they love Jesus? Ah, it's, it's hard. Let's quickly read 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 6.14. 2 Corinthians 6.14. Hallelujah. So give me message translation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Message. All right, let's do this together, people of God. Can we read together? So like, because you will see something there. Oh, yeah. Do not become partners with those who reject God. How can you make it of right and wrong? That's all. That's war. I'm war. <laughs> Why are we reading like this now? We are graduates. Ah. Oh, yeah, now. Let's move, let's move. Does Christ go strolling with the devil? And you, he says Christ doesn't, and you, you are not just strolling. You are embracing. You are embracing. Uh -uh. Say, can you put this fire your bosom and it will not burn you? Oh, yeah, now let's go. Who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? That is exactly what we are. Each of us a temple in whom God lives. If you see yourself as a temple that God lives in, you will not treat your body anyhow. You will not allow anybody to defile your body anyhow. That's why when pastor prays that, even knife will not cut you anyhow. Except maybe you are going into surgery for child delivery. You know, I don't, I don't have anything against that. Even though I had my children natural birth, but... You can have your child anyway, whatever is comfortable. Some people want to have their child on their birthday. It's all well and good. But he says, where, where is that? Ah, uh, it's that mean. Yes. So if you see your body as the temple of the Holy Ghost, you don't treat it anyhow. Treating it anyhow is not taking care of your body. You are not hygienic. You don't treat your body like it. This is where the spirit of God lives for God's sake. As in literally. If they say, is God in you? Yeah, God is on my inside. And you are smelling foul. Even the spirit of God will just be like, ah. And what about the same cop? Eh? So I'm not saying take care of your smell. A good smell attracts favor to you. All right, let's go. God Himself puts in the display. I'll give Him men who look into them. I'll be that God. Amen. 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 God will move in you and be your people in the. Amen. 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 Um, I think we'll still have to go. A bit further, I think one more, two more verses. So leave the corruption and compromise. So leave the corruption. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those who will pollute you. 
wait. Compromise. Someone you are dating and is hating your compromise is a red flag. Instead of going to church, they tell you, why don't we go to club? Why don't we smoke? Why don't we... Some of these things, it's not like in the Bible, they say, oh, don't smoke. But you know that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I cannot treat it anyhow. Because people who do such things even have scriptures to back up the full idea they do. Trust me. They know how to, you know, twist scriptures to back up their compromise. But you know yourself that when you are from Inola, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I cannot allow myself to be defiled. Amen. Amen. So he says, leave it for good, says God. Don't link up, link up with those who will pollute, pollute you. I want you all for myself. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share himself or share his glory. God loves you so much. God loves you so much, Sister Banke. He gave you a gift, Jesus Christ. And that gift, he knows that if you don't share it or link up with a man that would further his kingdom, they might short circuit what God wants to do through you. Because the person you marry can stop the flow of God's you know, agenda through you. Because when you marry somebody that does not believe in what you believe in or value what you value, and you are telling the guy you are going to church. So I, I, don't, I don't, you know, like I said, I'm not castigating unbelievers or those not believers. I'm talking to Christians now because we are talking about Christian dating. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We are talking about Christian dating. So they are the Lord over their own life. You, you have Jesus. You have mentors. You have parents that can speak into your life and correct you. They, don't, they might not even need all of that. They want gumption. So you knowing what you know, you should not fall into the trap that somebody you meet will now circumvent what God wants to do through you or the agenda of God through you. You are supposed to feed nations. Then you now meet somebody that does not value or believe in the same thing you believe. Trust me, those nations will just have to wait. <laughs> we'll tell you, so if, have you fed your own family that you're not saying God wants you to feed nation? You must sit down there. You're not church today. <laughs> so don't try to build marriage with a person that is not consistently, mark the underlying word, consistently following after Jesus. Whether a man or a woman, Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amos 3.3 3. says, can two walk together? Can two walk together? Except they be in agreement. You can't walk with an unbeliever. Your values are different. What you believe in is different. Somebody believes in... In fact, when I say unbelievers, I'm also talking about Christians who don't believe in what you believe in. So when I'm talking about unbelievers, don't think I'm, th um, I'm talking about the people of the other, other faith. No, no. I'm talking about those who don't have the same doctrine of value with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't let them pollute you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So, um, so if he's not a follower of Jesus, he's a no-no. That's just it. Number one point. Summary. 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 Sum summation. Summarize. Whatever. If he's not a follower of Jesus, it's a no-no. Hallelujah. It's a red flag. So, whoever you are going to be joined with, let him first of all give his heart to Jesus. Then you can submit your own hearts to them. Number two. Number two, when you don't experience healthy conflicts, is a red flag. So I'm not saying that you will not have issues or snag here and there, but how do you deal with them as believers? So don't lie to yourself that some people don't fight. Though. I don't know how they do it. Though. Maybe when they fight, they just hmm, and they settle. 
but you have snag. But how you deal with it as a believer is what matters most. How you deal with conflict as a believer is by the word, not by your brain. It's through the word. Then this person must be able to submit himself to the word, have mentors, have people they submit themselves to. Amen. Amen. A believer, an, an unbeliever rather, or a contemporary, like a man of God would say, relationship can fight and, you know, they blow themselves and afterwards they settle over sex. Mm -hmm. But you as a believer, you know you have to talk this out. Oh, myself and pastor. Sometimes we don't sleep till 4 a.m. I'll close my eyes. My pa pastor will say, you better use something to hold that eyebrow. Oh, Suleni said, Lola. I'm a risk avoidance person. If it's possible, pastor used to say something jokingly. Lola, if you can avoid your shadow, you will avoid it. And that's me. I don't know uh, why. That does not mean that Allah will not come. It will come. Trust me. It will come. It might not even come directly. It might be indirectly with people that are living with you or through your children. Maybe um, the way you beat the children or the way you slap the children, your husband doesn't. It will come. But how do you settle this? So while you are dating, during courtship, you need to know yourself. What are the things that, you know, tick off this person? What are the things he does not like? How does he get pacified? You need to know these things. So that in marriage or in courtship, you... Hallelujah. The way you settle conflict as believers is very, very important. Is what? Very, very important. You don't deal with conflict as unbelievers. You need to both have mentors that you submit to. It might be one mentor, it might be both of you having separate mentors, but people that you trust that they are speaking truth over your lives. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't use the opinion of men or social media to settle conflicts between yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Work on your relationship. Work on your marriage. Watch it. If you're fighting so often, that's an extreme. You must look at those things that are causing those fights. And if you're not fighting at all, that means both of you are lying to yourselves. Somebody is lying. They said, you're right to say something. If two people walk out of the room and they are all laughing, somebody is lying. So you need to deal with issues and deal with them on time. Don't avoid issues. Don't bury issues. Deal with them. Talk about it. It might be difficult, but talk about it. Sometimes it might not even, it might be painful. You can cry, but talk about it. You are saving yourself. Ticking time bomb. Hallelujah. I pray that God will help somebody here tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Please don't sleep on me. I believe I'm preaching good here tonight. Yes. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Wherefore, my beloved, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Pastor told us something that don't be easy, don't get angry easily. Be slow to speak. Brr, before the man says something, you have said, brr, you, you have given him, landed all manner of insults, rain it on him, and you call yourself a believer. And that you hear the word of God. Sometimes I wonder, ah, mafuni, I will give it to, what are you giving it to? Or who are you giving it to? Your mate. Even though you are mate, what do you respect about him anyway? Or why are you even dating him when you can't respect him? I don't know. The one that baffles me is that I don't trust him and you are dating him. <laughs> like, seriously. Seriously. You don't, and you know, those people who don't trust, they're the ones that don't trust themselves. Yes. 
They are watching, they are calculating. Ah, where did you go to? Where did you do this? Where did you? Who are you talking to? Who are you mesmerizing with? Why did you snap with that girl? Why did you snap? Like, serious. Can you rest? Say rest. rest. If you are going to die, <laughs> there's something I used to tell myself. If you are going to die, one to kill yourself. No, I will not kill myself. When you are looking at the guy's phone, please, what are you hoping to find? Because scripture says, he that seek it, find it. If you seek it, you will find it. Okay, you are dating a Christian guy and you are sleeping around. So why are you dating him in the first place? Why are you, why are you even in the relationship? So you need to watch it. For the rest of man walketh not the righteousness. So what I'm, I want to bring up that is be slow to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Hallelujah. Number three. Hmm, this one. When the person you love or those you love, your family and your friends, don't love the, the person you love. Do you understand? So the person you are dating, the people around you, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, have an opinion about that person. Watch it. Because love, like I said, some people will tell you love is blind. Marriage will open your eyes. When your mother says, ah, so, so, so I'm not saying you don't have the spirit of God, hallelujah. You have the spirit of God on your inside. You have the mind of Christ. But when everybody is complaining about the same thing, her adventure, maybe the girl is even full of herself, and around you she's acting all of you. But people around you, she's hostile to them. People around you notices that she's full of herself. She does not respect. But when you are there, they do all those pretense and your mother is telling you Damilola Minister Dan your father called you and said hmm oh sorry <laughs> your friend your best friend and you know these people knew you not that they knew you alone they love you because they don't want they want the best for you so if you are happy it's their joy that you are happy so when they are saying, ah, ah, or you mention a name, and like, ah. okay. God bless you. <laughs> well, yeah, let's, let's, con let's continue to, ah, if any other, it is well, they've concluded your place that, Ah. Mm. They all cannot be wrong. Scripture says in the multitude of counsel, they say, even give them a chance. To, because, you know, because love, emotion is, you love her so much. You love her so much. Trust me, you will not believe. In fact, you will pray. That their agenda or whatever they say. What you must do, you will even be praying that every counsel of each of them, every counsel of my parents towards this marriage, towards this relationship. And they are telling, they, they want your joy, they want your happiness. So it's you and I, or you and him that will live in the same house. Nobody will be there with you. But they are telling you, this girl does not love other people. Coco, your mora. This girl does not like us, your parents. This brother is philandering. Anytime you are not looking, the eyes is roving. But you are not paying attention. They are saying it lovingly. They are saying it, you know, in style. They don't want to lamole. But as a believer or somebody that has perception like you, keep them eyes. Let them even, you know, Submit it. Submit that relationship to higher authority. Amen. Amen. And let them be able to help you. Hallelujah. I pray that you will not fall into the trap of the enemy in the name of Jesus. 
this is a red flag. Hallelujah. You will not fall into the trap of the enemy in the name of Jesus. What number are we right now? Uh -uh. Please, can you mention the ones I've mentioned? Number one. Number two. Number three. You are dating. Hallelujah. So number four. When you find it difficult to trust the one you are with, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6 to 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 to 7, NIV. says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. Emphasis. It always protects, always trusts, always trusts, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Emphasis, always trusts. If you are dating somebody and you don't trust them, you need to break up that relationship. It is a red flag. Hallelujah. You don't want to be with somebody that you don't trust. There's no basis for it. Why would I be sleeping with somebody with one eye open and one eye closed? No. I'm a believer. I'm a child of the Most High. I should sleep. He says he giveth his beloved sleep. So why would I be sleeping with one eye? When God says he will give his... I know, I can't be watching. When God is taking charge of everything so you need to ensure that you trust the person you are with and the person you are with is trusting hallelujah so watch it if you are the one that is not trusting because it might be on the one flip side you are the one that is not trusting you find it very different because of your background because of what you have gone through because of you know what your parents went through you find it difficult to trust other people you need to allow god do its perfect work in you. Be trusting. Hallelujah. Finally, when the person you are dating, Damilola, when the person you are dating, Victor, is taking you away from Jesus. Ah, that one is a very big one for me. Ask yourself, since I started dating this person, am I getting closer to Jesus? Or this person is taking me away from Jesus? Am I getting more committed to the things of God? Or the things I've been doing before, I'm doing less of it because I started. And that person has become a God over you. So since I started dating this person, the things that I wouldn't do before, I started rationalizing it. Hey, Kodebado, you know, you know, it doesn't matter now, you know, we're in a contemporary world, you know, God permits this thing, it's, some things are permissible to me, things you would not dare do before. But since you started dating this guy, you have started polluting your mind. What does that Second Corinthians tell us? He said we should not allow them to pollute us. So since you started dating this person, have you become closer? And closer because a man or a woman that you are dating should draw you closer to Jesus not take you away from your master not take you away from your first love not take you away from the things that brings you joy and fulfillment hallelujah so I'm not saying that this like I said so these things are not cast in stone nor are they deal breakers but in your relationship, or the people that you even, you've even grown up with. Some of us are from broken. I thank God for God. God, you know, rewrote my story. So generationally, that history will no longer be there in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that will be so for everyone here. We'll home um, from a broken family in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Repeat itself in your life. Amen. In the name, some of you came from polygamous home. It is no fault of yours. If you could write your history or your background, you would have written a very perfect story. That you know, I came from a family of one man, one wife. You know, my dad and my my mom. They go to church in the same car. You know, they wear anko. They do things together. But you didn't have that. But you are. God is giving you a chance 
to rewrite your own history, what would you do? This is a clean slate for you now. What would you do with what Christ has given to you? With this knowledge that you have, it is my prayer that you will not make mistakes in the name of Jesus. And whatever mistakes that you've made in the past, God who can rewrite a story will rewrite your story so perfectly in the name of Jesus. And give you a hope and a future in the name of Jesus. And say, somebody here tonight, God is giving you a hope and a future in the name of Jesus. You will not make costly mistakes in the name of Jesus. Somebody here, the Lord is giving you a new, you know, story. The story of your past has not been palatable. It looks like you can't even, you know, you can't even say it out. But God is telling you tonight that from that mess, God is giving you a message to your world. That relationship, that home, that child will be corrected for Jesus in the name of Jesus. God will use you for his glory in the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to say it here. Don't lower your standard for any man or for any woman. Anybody... Any man that will draw you away from your first love, from the love of Jesus Christ, is not worth your time. Any man that will not move you closer to Jesus and say, Baby, Bobby, let's do this together. Let's take this walk of faith together. Let's do this together. This journey of faith, I cannot do it alone. Let's do it together. Any man that cannot hold your hand, any woman that is not willing to go with you along this journey, they are not worth time. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Have the courage to break away from such red flags. If you see them, if it can be corrected, glory to God. Hallelujah. God. Don't be yoked with an unbeliever. Is a regret of a lifetime. That brother is calling your attention in church and you know he's consistent. Consistently working with Jesus. But you prefer that one that is using his sister and brother for Yahoo. You say that one is dull. Koshat. Mm. He's not riding the best of cars. May he not ride you. Have you not seen somebody who rode car today and tomorrow is on the streets? Naked. We've seen it on social media. I'm not saying something you don't, you and I don't know. We know, we know these things. We, you know it. But your inner carnality will want to manifest itself. May it not prosper in the name of Jesus. So whatever red flag that you heard tonight, there's a green flag to it. That means that when, number one, can you say it so that I can tell you what the green flag is? So the green flag is date somebody who is constantly following Jesus, pursuing Jesus. Number two, that means that you should experience the LD conflict. Know how you, you know, manage your conflict. Know how you manage your conflict the Bible way. Use the word of God. Any woman or man that tells you put Bible aside is what? A red flag. Number three. When the person or when your family does not love the person you are dating. That means that the person you are dating should be loved or be spoken well by your family. Or the things that they say you know, are consistent with what you believe in. Hallelujah. Yes, Number four. I've said it over and over. There's no point dating somebody that you don't trust. The green flag is date somebody you trust. Hallelujah. And be trusting yourself. Finally. Don't let anybody don't. It is too much power. I say it and I stand on it. It is too much power 
to give to one woman, human being to tell you how to serve your Jesus. Serve him recklessly. Love on him. Lay your life. Who gave you the life? Please, don't allow anybody tell you how to love on your Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when you're pursuing purpose, loving Jesus, striving to get closer to him, honoring Jesus through your lives, ensure that the person you are taking is also honoring Jesus, make, uh, 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 serving purpose, serving in the kingdom, is purposeful about the kingdom. Hallelujah. You are too smart. And God loves you too much for you to make mistake. You will not make mistake in Jesus' name. Can we be all standing this night? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. Can you give God thanks tonight for the power of his word? That this word will not stand against you the last day. That you heard it all. Pastor Fumi told you. You went and do your own. It's my prayer that you will not make mistakes in the name of Jesus. That when God is you will obey his instruction in the name of Jesus. That as a single person, you will walk on yourself in the name of Jesus. You will recognize that God has made you whole. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we stretch out our hands towards the communion?